Cheryl? All right, Eric Wilson. James, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Yeah, I don't know why. I'm not I can't hear anything. You can't hear? I can't hear anything. Okay, I can hear you guys now. I'm so sorry about that. Cheryl. Oh, I can hear you now. <laughs> sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. I've been dealing with so many Zoom calls lately and my brain's about ready to fry. Okay. James, um, the last 24, 48 hours, can you put into words your thoughts, what's going on, what can be accomplished, and where's your team at right now emotionally and everything else going on? I mean, it's tough uh, to focus on basketball. Uh, and you know, uh, some some people it's hit it, it's it's hit. I think it's hit everybody hard, but some some people it's hit harder than than others uh, as far as um, their their ability to concentrate on the game. Uh, and me, I just have to be you know an anchor for um, all of them and just and just try to guide them in the best way possible. So it's it's been it's been tough for me as well. Um, but you know, uh, we're here. Um, so we have to, you know, try to accomplish something um, socially. Uh, we have to try to accomplish something together. Uh, but that's that's a that's a tall task and a and a tall order. So, um, but we're trying. What did it mean to you that your league, the NBA, the NHL, MLS, and several MLB teams collectively took a stand? Uh, I, mean, I think it means a lot. Uh, I think they're, you know. They have their voices and they're speaking up, uh, and and you know they're making a stand. Uh, we we like the fact that it's collective, and we like um, that you know the athletes are are actually asserting themselves in that regard. So uh, we're just here to support them and um, you know try to make the society better. Well, what's been really interesting too is that I was talking to Lucas Giolito of the White Sox. He made sure to mention the WNBA. So you're getting support where sometimes you haven't had support. Yeah, um, th that's true. I mean, but you know, the WNBA has always been in the forefront. Um, the fact that, you know, other leagues have followed suit. Um, I think they, they are in a mindset where they have to mention us because we have always been um, ahead of the curve as far as uh, speaking up and uh, setting examples for social is issues. Thank you, I appreciate it. Eric Wilson. Hey, Coach. Uh, speaking of being ahead of the curve, um, so my question is, what is the next step with regard to the WNBA, the ownership, and just the players themselves as far as active in the communities? Um, you know, I, I don't know what that looks like. Uh, you would hope that it starts with us getting more involved and, in, you know, our communities and and actually um, you know I hear people talking about voting voting and that's that's very important uh, but just being aware of you know legislation that is out there and the laws and rules uh, that are out there um, we have to be cognizant of and, and pay attention to tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, you have the black national convention uh, that's that's going to be streamed uh, live uh, where uh, they're trying to uh, not only make change, they're trying to pass uh, the Breathe Act. And the Breathe Act is a, a modern day civil rights bill uh, where they talk about um, expanding resources to, to black communities, to, to black businesses, and um, you know, uh, holding uh, law enforcement accountable, uh, limiting their funds, um, you know, so, uh, those things, you know, like uh, passing laws to you won't be able to uh, chokehold or no knock warrants and, and things of that nature. So 
Uh, that's what the Breathe Act, that's just a little bit of what the Breathe Act is trying to uh, bring um, bring to the floor and, and they, they're trying to pass laws to actually support um, equality and especially uh, uplifting the black community. So uh, that's where I'll be at seven o'clock tonight. I'll be watching that uh, with our team and other teams are invited. So uh, we're gonna stream that and, and watch the Black National Convention. Um, then you can get information on blacknovember.org. And, and coach along those lines, a bit of a very unique question just as you, we as the media have a responsibility. Um, what's your ask of us during this time? Uh, I think it's, um, we, we would love for the media to, you know, and it, it's gonna take everybody to actually um, not get distracted about, uh, not get distracted about if he had a knife in the car, not get distracted about uh, whatever his past may have been um, because that can be put out there and not be true, uh, not be distracted and not report on uh, Breonna Taylor's ex-boyfriend uh, being arrested for drug possession. They use that to try to justify uh, the death or the attempted murder of people. Uh, you know, uh, they they use that, they, they talk about the the wrongful deeds of these people. And it has nothing to do with unjust murder. Um, I am sure that if the same thing happened to me, that they would make me out of a criminal uh, after my passing. And that's just not right. He did not deserve to be shot seven times, no matter what he did in his past. You know, uh, the same thing could be, you know, the same mercy that was shown to Rittenhouse uh, the kid that actually shot and killed two people uh, should be the same mercy that, that is shown to black people too. Thank you, coach. Howard McDowell. James, thanks for taking the time to chat. I, I wanted to ask you about two uh, separate questions. Uh, First one is just if you could take me through some of the most memorable moments over these last couple of days as you and your team have worked together to figure out a way to amplify your voices. And uh, from there, I just had a follow up. Uh, well, we, you know, us having a, uh, a meeting with, with our team uh, uh, two nights ago, I thought it was very beneficial for us. Uh, uh, right after the announcement of uh, the 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 you know where where we were sitting out the game, um, I think you know those meetings were uh, very uplifting, very emotional. Um, and I've had individual meetings with players since then that have been very enlightening um, and very educational. And um, you know, and at the same time, trying to focus on basketball, um, and it's. Um, it's, it's, it's physically tiring. Like I'm, I'm tired, um, emotionally tired. Uh, I'm drained and uh, trying to put all these pieces together and, and do the right thing as far as um, being a black man and, and uh, represent myself and represent my family. And at the same time, representing this organization to the best uh, of my ability uh, in these uh, times where, you know, whatever I say, um, to you guys, it's going to be attacked. And it has been attacked by people that just don't have a heart. And that doesn't bother me. That doesn't bother me. Uh, because I was built for that. Like I was built for the criticism. Uh, but the fact that you have to lead when you have um, uh, 10, uh, 11 amazing women, uh, amazing staff, and they look for you for uh, either guidance or comfort and uh, you always feel like you're not doing enough. Well, I, I appreciate that. And to that end, that's the second part of my question where there's a lot of critics who come back by saying, what, what qualifies as, uh, as a gain? What qualifies as success within this larger movement? And I just, I wonder whether that's the wrong way of looking at it, whether the, way in which you and your players have been able to 
connect, find your voice, whether you consider that to be the success, regardless of where the movement goes from here? Um, well, we, we press on. Uh, we continue to you know, make, the light, make light of situation and use our resources for the greater good. Um, it moves on to a point where Emmett Till, uh, my father was three years old when Emmett Till was killed, okay? My son is four years old when George Floyd was killed, okay? Uh, that's, you know, that's amazing that 65 uh, years have passed and we're still in the same situation, two generations. Like that was two generations ago. So I'm gonna press on because um, not even my son's son. I don't want my son, grandson, to have to have another George Floyd in his lifetime. So that's what motivates me. All the best to you, James, thank you. Thank you. Jake Meister. Hey, James. Thanks for taking the time. Um, when people look back at this season, you know, five, ten years from now, what legacy do you think it'll leave behind? Uh, what legacy? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, what le legacy? That the league will have during right. the time? Yes. Um, I don't know. It remains to be seen. Um, and it's hard for me to focus on that. I mean, I, I would like to answer your question um, because it's so immediate and so urgent um, that you can only think about tomorrow. Uh, so uh, I, I just, you know, I, I'm in the middle of it, you know. Um, it's like being stuck in mud. Uh, you're not really thinking about the beach. You're just thinking about how do we get out of this mud. And um, so I can only see what what's right in front of me and, and uh, I have to press on to try to get out of this. You said you just were mentally and physically exhausted from these past, you know, few days. How can you, I know obviously it's very difficult to make that transition, but how do you just shift your mind to having a game tomorrow and with everything going on? So, uh, and, and I'm, I, it's a, it's a, that's a good question. So, Mentally and physically tired, uh, emotionally tired. Uh, but this isn't too different from the life I regularly live. And this isn't too different from Black America. It's just now we have eyes on us. So it's a lot of times I'm mentally and physically and emotionally tired, especially when situations arise that happen to us. Uh, me personally, it gets you tired because you're like, when will it end? When will it end? Now, the thing that's got me even more tired is that now eyes are on us now. And now, you know, everybody's letting their emotions out instead of keeping it bottled in. But we're always this tired because this is what we have to live through. And now it's tiring for other people as well. And so it puts even more pressure on you. Uh, and so, uh, that's that's where we are and we're all sharing this pain and sharing this tired and sharing this hurt together when normally we would have kept it bottled inside but now it's time for change so people are letting it out and um, I'm just trying to be a support system for them. Appreciate it. Thank you, James. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much, James. Thank you, guys. We'll have Gabby Williams up next followed by Stephanie Dolson. Hey, Gabby, thanks for joining us. We'll get started with Cheryl raised out. Hi, Gabby. Can you uh, talk about what it's been like the last 24, 48 hours 
collectively as a team and personally, the emotions that you guys have all been probably going through at this time? Uh, me personally, um, I'm exhausted. Uh, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, I'm, I think we're just, everyone is. Uh, like We can't even find the energy to play or put our focus on anything else besides what's going on in, in our country. And I mean, I, I'm trying to find the strength to not feel almost defeated. And I'm glad that I'm in this bubble with, with these powerful women who have my back because this is exhausting. How difficult will it be to take the court tomorrow? Um, I don't know. I think it's it's tough because you know basketball is the vehicle that gives us this platform to talk about these things and to raise this kind of money and, and awareness. But it's going to be really difficult um, when it comes down to it to to play and do our so-called job um, with this on our mind and, and on our hearts. Thank you. Eric Wilson. Gabby, I, I appreciate your time with this. Um, I, I just have one question. Uh, Coach Wade said that this is normally, a, a, a normal day in the life, if you will, but because there's so much light being brought to it, not just minorities, but everybody is having to deal with it. Can I ask, who have you leaned on over the last 48 hours? to help you emotionally and mentally stay focused? Uh, my teammates, my staff, everyone has like really, really had my back. And um, uh, I mean, they know what kind of struggles that we've all, we've all faced similar struggles. We've all faced struggles that none of us have, have that, that we can't relate to, but we all feel each other's pain. And, you know, we're also empathetic for one another. Um, I, I opened up about some things for the first time to my teammates and they had my back right away. I mean, they, they were there for me to lean on. They were like, whatever you need, we got you. And it's been the same thing for all, I think it's 10 of us here or whatever. Like we really just feel each other's pain and we're here for each other. So I, uh, I was texting, you know, with um, Walt Hopkins and I was just saying like, we couldn't be in a, in a better place right now. Like I'm so happy that James ha has our back. I'm so happy that all of our coaching staff, even our white players, our, our white staff, they're all here for me and, and here for, we're here for each other. Gabby, thank you. Mm -hmm. Howard McDowell. Gabby, thanks for taking the time to chat. You've long been plugged into the movement. So I wonder what it feels like for you to see so many other people joining you, whether it feels like a tipping point moment to you and how you process that, you know, between an element of, I would imagine, uh, joy over seeing it and it has to be frustration over the number of latecomers. But what is that like for you? I hear this question all the time of, wow, you're, you know, you've been doing this for a while or before it was trending and I hate, I hate, I hate, hate, hate this question and answer. And I've given kind of the same BS, you know, politically correct answer for it. But to be honest, I've just like, we've just been hurting and now people are hurting again too. It's not, oh, let's join the movement because it's what we're doing. This is our lives, like shit. Like now people are feeling our pain. People are hurt too. It's not joining the movement. We're freaking hurt. That's what it is. It's not who's, I'm happy. I'm ha I'm not happy. More people are hurting now. You don't think it's what it is. You don't think that there are more people who are joining this movement who are not directly affected by it in 2020. I, I, that that seems to be the the common belief. But it, it, do you see it differently? I just I just gave my answer. Yes, more people are joining the movement, but it's. It's because more people are hurting and because more people are being affected by it. It's not because people are doing it for fun. And that's, that hurts me. I'm, I'm happy that we're gaining more allies, that people are educating themselves, but no, I am not happy that more people are in pain. Thank you, Gabby. I appreciate your time. Larry Snyder. 
Hey, Gabby, uh, along those lines, I'm just wondering, uh, we, I know you guys deal with so much negative stuff on social media. What have you gotten on social media that has lifted you up, whether it's from a youngster or, or things like that that have really kind of boosted you guys? Uh, it'll be like the smallest things, just seeing people donate to Sky Takes Action, seeing people retweet it, uh, having people from the organizations that we're donating to um, reach out and just say what it means to them, or our fans say like, wow, like Brave Space has helped me with this, or Firehouse Community has helped me with this, and, and that that lets me know that what we're doing is, is working and, and is, it's really, really rewarding. Um, my favorite is when I hear things from the young, young girls, like uh, uh, the young girl who was, who was um, Kelly, I think you can get her name. She was one of the young, young, young reporters who said, you know, she was a young black girl watching us. And it's things like that, that like, we can really make a difference in those kids' lives. Yeah, that's Pepper Pursley. Pepper Pursley. That, that made me so happy. It made everything so worth it. Brandon Queen. Gabby, I know you said that the the connection with teammates has been big for you the past few days. And, and even you said some of the other people in the bubble with you that, that aren't on the sky, but has there been any particular moment or conversation that you feel like you'll remember from this week? Yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to keep that private, but yes, there have been uh, a lot of things within our team that I will remember for the rest of my life. Um, and then as far as the league, I mean, it was just gave me chills to see what Washington did. I was just sitting in the living room and, and watching out with my roommates, um, seeing what they did. Just like it felt like you're living in a moment of, of history in, in a, a moment, a turning point in the world and for our league. Larry, did you have another question? No, I'm sorry. Oh, no problem. Uh, Eric. So Gabby, I asked Coach Wade, and I'm going to ask you, um, you know, what can we as the media do? What's our next responsibility? Um, I will say uh, you guys have been incredible, um, letting us, giving us more of an audience to speak to and having our backs. And I appreciate you even asking that question. Uh, but remember that we're tired too. Remember that we're exhausted. You're, I know you are black, but to our white reporters, your black athletes, they're tired. They're tired of <laughs> sometimes answering these questions, having to relive these experiences. But as the media, just make sure that whatever, you, that you're also showing the positives and that we're not sharing um, anything that could be traumatic or any reminders of what it's kind of like, any, anything violent. Stay away from those things and just make sure that we're not normalizing violence towards black individuals. Thanks, Gabby. Thank you. Jake Meister. Hey, Gabby, um, ask Coach Wade this question. I want to get your thoughts as well. In five or 10 years from now, what legacy do you think the WNBA and its players will leave behind from this season? I hope, like I said, I hope the season is a turning point for what sports are and what they should become. Uh, you know, 10, 20 years ago, Michael Jordan was saying Republicans and Democrats buy issues or whatever. And, and now like, look, look what we're at. So now we're seeing that there's no uh, difference in our, um, in who we are in our character. We are basketball players, but we are humans and we are black. And so I think from 10 years from now, hopefully because of what we've done, that won't even be a question. There won't be a, this won't be called political. This will just be our lives. Appreciate it. Thank you. Brendan? Sorry, I meant to put my hand down. I'm, I'm good. Thanks, Gabby. I really okay. appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Gabby. Thank Thanks you so guys. much. I'll bring Stephanie in.
Hi, Steph. Thanks for joining us. We'll start with Cheryl raised out. Hi, Stephanie. What's been the last 24, 48 hours, you being part of a team that's feeling the emotions and, and the, the impact of what's been going on throughout the country? So the first part, sorry, I didn't hear. What, what, what's, been, what's been your feelings, your emotions, oh, being, oh. Uh, the impact of this? Um, honestly, just sadness. Um, you know, everything that's happening in the world today is just, it's hard to process. Um, obviously, I've never um, experienced it myself, but I know my teammates are tired. Um, I know they're exhausted um, emotionally, physically, everything, and I, I can't begin to fathom um, what they go through every day, you know, waking up and stuff. So it's emotional. Um, it's hard, but you know, me being uh, a white female, I'm, I tell them every day that I'm here for them, um, that whatever decisions they want to make, um, you know, whatever I can do to be next to them and stand with them, uh, I'm always willing. Is it helpful that you guys are in a bubble because you can have these conversations or is the bubble difficult? Um, I'm not sure. I think uh, it's, it might be a little bit of both. I think um, in some way you feel kind of confined to only being in the bubble. Um, so I don't think it's hard to sit here and know that there are other people on the front lines uh, protesting and, and fighting that fight, whereas we're kind of confined to staying here. Um, on the other hand, we have the opportunity to 144 of us women um, being here together, we're able to use our platform and um, spread awareness and um, kind of use it for good um, all together. And that's pretty powerful. Is this a turning point for sports? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I was, it was definitely, um, I think history was made. I don't, I don't recall um, another time that that many sports uh, teams and leagues have have just not played. Um, so I think we've created something special, um, but I hope so. Um, I don't know. Hopefully, it really, it's more about turning point for the world. I don't think it's so much a sport about the turning points for sports. Um, we've always been fighting this fight, and I just think we just need people to follow. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Eric Wilson. Steph, um, I really appreciate this. And, and before I get started, I just want to say, I, I have said to Coach Wade, we need more Coach Wades in our life. The fact that you are standing by your sisters and supporting them in any way possible, we need more Stephanie Dolsons in this world as well. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, I guess my question is, how do you ladies, I don't want to say put this on the back burner because it's not, but how do you ladies move forward knowing that you still have games and that you came into the Wubble specifically to win a championship? How do you get that focus back? Um, uh, it's not easy. Um, I think we all knew coming into the bubble uh, what the situation would be. Um, um, you know, we knew we'd be using this platform and uh, for good and everything, but we also knew that, yeah, we'd be playing basketball games also and that at the end of the day, it is our job. Um, you know, there are people outside of this bubble, obviously, who work every day in and out. They have to wake up in the morning and go to work um, no matter the circumstances. And that's, I think, something that we also have to do. Um, you know, it, it's not easy. Um, it is just a sport, but at the same time, it is our, our jobs. Um, so I think it's something that we have to, as hard as it is, uh, compartmentalize things and um, just focus on, you know, one day at a time. I've asked Coach Wade, I've asked Gabby, and now I'm going to ask you, what responsibility do you put on us as media with regards to all of this? Um, 
I think asking the right questions. Um, not to say you guys aren't good at that. Just saying. <laughs> um, asking the right questions and just letting us tell our stories. You know, um, I do tend to think that media, again, I'm not like directing this towards anyone, just saying a general statement. Um, you know, I do t think that media sometimes has stories that they want to tell um, instead of just asking, you know, questions for us to tell our own stories and say how we feel. Um, I think you guys actually do a really good job of that. Um, but just continuing that and, and believing in us and having our backs no matter what um, we say or, or choose to do. Thanks, Steph. Thank you. Robert Schaefer. Hi, hey, Stephanie. Thanks for uh, taking the time. Um, I, I wanted to piggyback off a question that was asked by Cheryl earlier about, you know, the bubble environment, um, you know, amid all of this. Uh, Gabby talked about the support system that she's found through the team over the last couple of days, kind of processing everything going on. Um, as much as you'd care to share, I'm just curious um, what the team environment ha has been like the last few days as you guys all kind of process this together. Um, like a family. Uh, I think um, it's easy to act like a family or support people when things are going well and everything's just, you know, butterflies and sparkles and shit. But um, I think it's when, when the real world uh, is just, it's hard. Um, it's emotional, it's draining. Um, you know, we've just tried to be a family and just stick together. Um, you know, we're in this bubble together. So like I said before, whatever is needed from me or from, you know, my other teammates, we're here to support, um, to stand with them, uh, to use our voices as well. Um, you know, I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned through all of this is no matter who you are, no matter how small your voice is, um, how important it is and how important it is to not be silent. So for me, that's my biggest thing is just, doing what I can, um, you know, to do my part, really. And right now, that is just being a support system for my teammates. Thank you. Howard McDowell. Hi, Steph. Good to chat with you. Thanks, uh, thanks for the time. I've got two uh, questions for you. Uh, one uh, about the last few days and the other about basketball. So let's start with the last few days if we could. Having James Wade, having a black man in the head coaching position, how much do you think that contributed, helped, and changed the way in which your team has processed what's taken place this week? Um. Uh, I don't necessarily think think it has changed much. Only, and I only say that because I know my um, my teammates, my black teammates. They have brothers, uncles, dads, um, cousins. Uh, I think that in general, um, it has been hard for them. I know it's been hard for them, um, but I think it does give us a different perspective um, having you know, a male, uh, a black coach who things that happen, we know it could happen to him. Um, and that just makes it hit home even more, I think. Um, you know, he has done a great job of teaching us um, a lot of just like life lessons. Um, I, I speak for the, the white uh, players. Um, by sharing experiences with us that he's gone through um, in his life and things that ha he's been through with his son. Um, and I know it hits really hard for him. Um, I know how hard and emotionally exhausted he is. Um, so I, I can't imagine it. And, you know, same as I said about my teammates, um, is the same for him that we're all here and we support him and uh, stand with him. And to a larger point, do you feel like the amplification of black voices we are seeing more in 2020 
is almost allowing more of America to go through what you as a basketball player experienced earlier on by virtue of the diversity inherent in the game of basketball? Um, I guess. Uh, I, know, I don't necessarily, I mean, I have been lucky enough, obviously, to be around diverse women um, and people uh, my entire life um, by playing basketball, but I would never kind of, you know, I would never give that excuse for other people. Um, and I hope they don't t say that, that I've had more of an opportunity or I've had more of a choice um, because at the, at the end of the day, they could go walk out to a bar and be in a very diverse bar and meet a ton of people um, and have the same experiences as me. So although I'm happy that people are, you know, their eyes are being opened, um, I think it's a long time coming. Their eyes should have been open a long time ago because it's been going on for longer than just 2020. Mm -hmm. hey. And if you'll forgive a basketball question as well, um, just wanted to talk about the season that Courtney Vandersloot is having. Um, her assist percentage is third best of any season in the history of the league. First and second spots are also occupied by Courtney Vandersloot. So I was hoping you could just take me through when you arrived here, the difference you felt of being able to play offensively next to somebody who sees the court the way she does and if you remember a moment, there was sort of an aha moment about the way she delivers the ball, what she does on the court. Yeah, I mean, she's incredible. Uh, her, her stats speak for themselves. Um, I was lucky enough to, you know, when the whole trade happened, although it was sad to leave D.C., um, you know, the first time I got to play with Sloot, I was like, damn, okay, I'm happy to be here. Um, you know, she makes the game easy and playing with someone like that is very rare. Um, you know, she, we know she will make the right decision nine out of 10 times. Um, and so it's just really special to, to watch and to be a part of her, um, her season that she's having. Uh, you know, she break records, she breaks records all the time. So for us, that's kind of nothing new, but um, I'm just glad that people are taking notice of her um, and recognizing her for, you know, her accomplishments. Appreciate your time as always, Steph. Thank you. Thank you. Brendan. Hey, so Gabby kind of just asked as, uh, one of the other reporters asked, like, what can we, especially as white media members do, um, to, make sure that we're cognizant of the fact that it's tiring to sit in front of us and answer questions tired to go through this. Right. So how, how, have, how do you kind of try to do the same thing as a white player in the league and, and be there in that way? What do you mean? Uh, just handling a moment where you're around people who have experienced something like this, maybe a little bit differently than yourself and just being, I guess you could call it an ally or whatever, I guess just take me through being in this situation this week and how you've, how you've experienced it, whatever that is. Oh, um, I mean, I feel like uh, I kind of already touched on that in just the way of being here. Uh, you know, I know um, through, like I said before too, being around, uh, you know, black women, black teammates, uh, coaches, I understand, although I have not been through it, I understand um, how exhausting it can be. Um, so for me, it's not about, you know, I don't go up to them. I'm not always, you know, tell me about this, tell me about that. For me, it's just being there and just, um, you know, having the vigil and putting my hand on, on Gabby's shoulder. Uh, just having a presence for them to know that I'm here, whether it's emotionally, whether it's physically, um, to know that I have their backs, um, to know that if they want to talk, that I'm here for them. Um, you know, I've texted multiple of my teammates just telling them that if they need to vent, that I'm here. Um, so for me, I'm just, it's whatever they need uh, is, is what, is how I kind of look at it. Yeah, thank you. Eric? 
All right, so I got one. I got one more question for you, Steph. Um, did y'all get the cakes? The cakes. The confetti cakes. Did you get them yet? What you mean? There's two confetti cakes sitting in the hotel for Kalia's birthday. Oh, probably. I mean, that, I'm not in charge of that stuff, but probably. I would assume so. Okay, just checking. That's all I need. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Not <laughs> yet. I'll have Anne make sure she grabs some. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so nice of you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Steph. Bye. Okay. Bye.